Three minutes after seven Sunday evening, Air France Flight 447 took off from Rio de Janeiro, an overnight flight to Paris. On board, 12 crew and 216 passengers, among them seven children and a baby. 58 passengers are Brazilian, 61 French, and at least two are American. 10.33 p.m. local time, the cockpit checks in with Brazilian air traffic control for the last time. 10.48, the plane leaves the range of Brazilian radar. Flying at 35,000 feet, its final blip, 190 miles northeast of the coastal city of Natal, flying towards a storm front. The storms that you find in the tropics can rise as high as 50,000 feet, and planes, commercial planes, just aren't capable of going that high. 11.14, the plane sends an automated message, electrical short circuit, back to the Air France maintenance base in Paris. Then, nothing. Sometimes pilots can find themselves stuck in a situation where they have no other options other than to continue to press forward. By 11.20, air traffic control in Brazil, France, Spain and Senegal have tried and failed to contact AF-447. Even if they'd lost both engines uh, somehow uh, and were gliding down, they've got about 140 miles they could glide from altitude and there's plenty of time to be able to make a radio call. So something more happened here. Air France has not named the pilot, but say he is very experienced, a veteran of 11,000 flying hours. The plane itself is relatively new, delivered to Air France in 2005. It is a new generation airplane. The, uh, the only fatality accident was uh, during flight testing of the aircraft. 7 a.m. in Paris, seven hours after takeoff, three and a half hours after last contact. Air France officials assess the situation as, quote, serious. Flight 447 from Rio de Janeiro was scheduled to land here at Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport at 10 after 11 this morning. Family and friends had come here to the terminal to meet their loved ones, but gradually concern crept in. The flight was listed as delayed, then an ominous announcement. Your attention please, we invite passengers waiting for the Air France flight 447 coming from Rio to proceed at the Air France information desk. At 10.52 Paris time, 18 minutes before flight 447 was due to land, Air France lists it as missing. In Rio, family members are gathering and an airline official tells the gathering press Air France, Air France regrets to say we have no news on flight 447. A French search plane takes off from Senegal in West Africa at midday Paris time. 17 minutes later, Brazil launches a search operation from the Fernando de Noronha Islands off the north coast. They're going to have to try and find some point of, uh, of aircraft wreckage, some what they call floatsome, that could be baggage, that could be clothing, that could be seat cushions. Relatives of the passengers now missing and presumed dead are ushered to a hastily created crisis center to be cared for by doctors and psychologists. Aviation experts aren't ruling out terrorism, a bomb. Meanwhile, the Air France boss is asked if the plane has been struck by lightning. It is a possibility, he replies. A possibility. In most instances, I think today we would look at something like this and say uh, it probably is not terrorism. Yet the potential exists and we cannot mark it off. Apparently aircraft are regularly struck by lightning, but only very rarely with catastrophic results. But it happened in August 2006 in Ukraine, 170 people were killed. Late in the afternoon, France's President Nicolas Sarkozy visits the families at the airport. He brings no comfort. I told them the truth, that is, that the chance of finding survivors is extremely slim. Airline officials still don't know what happened to their plane, but they're already calling this the worst disaster Air France has ever suffered. All hope is now gone, but people are still waiting to find out what could have gone so spectacularly wrong. 6.15 p.m., Air France calls another press conference. This is a catastrophe, undoubtedly, and we have lost an aircraft with 228 people in the world. 
228 people in 32 countries. An hour later, Air France announces the search area has been narrowed a few hundred square miles to a few dozen square miles. It may not be possible to put an, an accurate storyline together, especially if the flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder are never recovered. And in deep water, it won't be easy. France has asked the U.S. to help with satellite sweeps of the search area. Tonight, the search goes on. Too late for survivors, it's a search for answers. I'm Nick Watt for Nightline in Paris, France.